Hi, welcome to another one of my screencasts showing you what's new in QGIS 2. Um, in this screencast I'm going to show you how annotations work in QGIS 2. So if you've already used uh, QGIS 1.8's annotations, this is 1.8 that I've got in front of me here, and um, you'll see that there's um, basically two options that you can use, text annotations and form annotations, and then you can, of course you can move annotations. In QGIS um, 2, there will be a bunch more options for annotations, so um, uh, I have to find my annotation button quickly, because I lost it. Um, sorry, it's over here. So um, now you've got uh, text annotations, which were present in 1.8, form annotations, which were present in 1.8. Then there's uh, two new types of annotations being added, HTML annotations and SVG annotations. And of course you can still move annotations around. So, what is an annotation? Basically, it's a way to put a little callout um, onto the map. So, for example, you can just uh, select the annotation tool, and you can click, um, double-click on the annotation to edit its properties. So, this could be um, something like that, and you can do all the normal kind of stuff, like setting uh, font properties and so on. Um, and then uh, and the style of the font and so on. Um, you can also set the, the background and frame color for the, the callout or the annotation. And then you can sort of move it around and it's pinned to that point on the map. And when you pan your, your map around, the annotation follows um, and stays on that point. And you can also unpin the um, annotation in which case it sort of stays in the same place on the map and that's quite handy if you want to put for example some logos or some extra information that's on the uh, in your project on the panable uh, version of the, the map not on a printed map okay I'm gonna pin, pin mine back to the map there um, like that okay um, just shift it to the right place Okay, so that's the basic um, usage of map annotations. Um, the next usage of map, map annotations is a little bit more advanced. In fact, probably many of you would not use it because it's a bit more complicated to use, but um, it's quite useful because it allows you to do data-bound annotations. So what that means is that you basically want to be able to put an annotation, um, for example, in one of these um, political boundaries here and see what the political boundary na um, name is within our annotation. Now, in order to do that, um, oh, sorry, and we also want to mix in other information or um, create a custom user interface for showing that. So, in order to do that, we need to use a program called Qt Creator. It's a free download to get it. Um, it's part of the Qt SDK or this um, software development kit. Um, Qt or Qt. Um, depending on how you prefer to call it, is the, the um, framework and the libraries, uh, set of libraries that we use to create QGIS as well. Um, so there's an application called Qt Creator. You can get it on Windows, Mac and Linux. And if you open up Qt Creator, um, what you get is a, oopsie, sorry, I beg your pardon, I'm going to use Designer. You can do it with Creator as well, um, but I'm going to just use Designer because it's a simpler application. Um, so with designer basically you get a little prompt like this do you want to create a form and it defaults to one with buttons but having buttons on your annotation makes no sense so we're just going to have um, one a dialogue without buttons like this okay and now what you can do is you can basically put these different kind of controls onto the um, and it what's going to be your annotation um, so for example um, I can put a line edit over here and I can put a label Maybe I want to put a little, uh, a bigger label here saying, um, maybe I want to put something like place name, um, place information. Okay, and then um, this is going to be a big heading, so I'm going to just go in here and edit the properties of it. Um, you can set the font and various other things. Uh, so find the font option. Quickly filter to get font here. And then you can pull up a little box here to set the font. So um, let's just do something wacky. Like that. Okay. And then for um, 
for a text label. I can just call this name maybe. And now the important part is this part here where I'm going to create a um, data bound control on the form. Now I want to bind it to the name of the place. So in order to know how to do that, you'd have to go into QGIS and um, open the properties for the layer that you want to create your annotated uh, layer label for and then look at all the different um, fields that it's got and then you pick one or two or more that you want to, to do your binding on. So I'm going to use name one and um, let's just pick something else just for fun um, and let's put there type 4. I've got no idea what's in type 4 but I'll just pick it and see. Okay so I'll go back to my form design so I'm going to put another label there for I'm going to call this type and I'm going to put a, another um, line edit here. Okay, so now this is the important part. You have to name these line edits where the data is going to be um, displayed in exactly the same as their field name in your table. So that's name one, and this one's going to be type four. And it's case sensitive, so it must be exactly the same as what it is um, in the table. Okay, now I've got these things. Um, and they're going to be in a little dialog. Now I want to make sure that they sort of resize the dialog. So I'm just going to lay everything out nicely and then put it in what's called a grid layout, which is basically you just click on the form background and then you click on this um, uh, set of nine squares over here and you'll see they all get sort of um, laid out nicely like that. Now I might just see if I could center that quickly. Um, let's see alignment. Um, Oops, um, horizontal alignment, align horizontal center. There we go, that looks very nice. Now I'm going to save this and I'm going to put it in my, I've got a folder where I keep my forms, I'm just going to override that one there. And um, now I've got this form or this user interface definition file and then I can use that as a form annotation. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that form annotation is selected here and then I'm going to click on the thing that I want the annotation to appear in. And what happens, if I can just get in the right place, is that that form that I designed gets placed on the map, and the data that um, is connected to the two fields that I, um, I defined gets populated into these boxes. It's read only, you can't edit it or change it, it's really just for information. But it's a handy way that you can um, put um, different information on the map in an attractive way. Um, Okay, so um, let's just check if that's just put another one there like that. Right, and if you want to get rid of these again, you can double click them and press delete. Double click and press delete. I don't actually know where all these I think I might have played been playing with them earlier and they got left behind. Sometimes it's a bit fiddly to delete them. This one is almost like a ghost one. I'm just going to forget about it and go back to my Quake Epicenter. Um, okay, so I've shown you the two ways. This, uh, first was a simple um, form, a uh, simple annotation, then a form annotation. The next kind of annotation you can do is an HTML in an annotation. I'm just going to shift this around a bit. Um, over here, so I can pan my map a little bit this side. Um, okay, so to do the for uh, the HTML annotation, basically I pick up this one over here, and I choose a place where I want the annotation to appear. Now this annotation, you need to have paired a little bit of HTML. It could be anything. It could be a web. It could be the Google homepage, or it could be um, uh, anything that you've. Um, Created as HTML, but you must have it saved locally on your on your hard disk. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and pick one that I've prepared earlier. Um, this is actually um, one of the real-time um, map reports that we produce um, on InnerSafe. Okay, so I'm just going to go pick that over there, and then I'm going to say OK. And what it does is it populates this. Um, annotation with the HTML content from my HTML snippet and that is then georeferenced and placed onto the map. It's a very handy way of just putting some rich information onto your map that a user can come and open your project and pan around and see 
rich um, details about um, an object or a place. The last kind of annotation I'm going to show you today is called SVG annotation. And the idea of this an annotation type is to allow you to place an image onto your map. So um, the idea is, uh, or the, the procedure is, you just go and choose an SVG file that you have on your on your file system. And SVG stands for Scalar Vector, uh, Scalable Vector Graphics, and um, basically it's a it's a way for you to um, uh, define an image in a vector um, style. It's an open format. I'm just going to pick anything at random here. And basic, uh, and then what that does is um, it draws the image in the annotation box. Now um, you can see that it scales as I change the size of the box because um, it is scalable. It will scale up to the default size of the of the, um, of the image. If you want to get rid of the box itself, you can with a bit of um, skullduggery get rid of it by just setting the opacity um, to 100 percent uh, to zero percent for both the outline and the full of the annotation and then you've got sort of a free floating image that you can then move around on the map. So that's it, then when you're done you've got a map with a bunch of extra information on. It's not coming from any particular layer, you've added it onto the map yourself, it gets saved with the project, if you open the project again later you'll see um, your annotations there. Well I hope you've enjoyed this uh, screencast, I'm sorry if I both spoke a bit too fast, um, but I was trying to keep the screencast short and um, uh, have fun playing with annotations. See you next time.